May I ask everybody to please sit down now. We will begin. I would like to ask also the ushers and the marshals to please clear the center aisle. Clear the center aisle. Now, if you would like to post photos in your Facebook, you will have two minutes to do that. You please friend request the Filipino Apostolate. Sa Facebook, ha? Mag friend request kayo on the Filipino Apostolate Archdiocese of Newark and make friend request because you will see all the photos in that Facebook. Again, go to your Facebook, friend request. Filipino Archdiocese, Filipino Apostolate, Archdiocese of Newark, and then you will see all the photos from there. Then also, there is a link of the live stream that will be posted also in that Facebook page of the Filipino Apostolate. So I thank Father Bismarck for allowing us to use the live stream of the cathedral. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of the Sacred Heart of the Archdiocese of Newark. The Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark is very proud to lead this closing celebration of the 500th anniversary of the arrival of the Gospel in the Philippines. The quincentenary that marks the introduction of Roman Catholicism in the Philippines cannot go unnoticed. And given the impact and influence that Catholicism has and continues to have in every lives of Filipinos. The story of the Philippines is the story of the church's most successful missionary efforts in Asia. Like the proverbial grain of the mustard seed sown in fertile earth, the growth and development of the church in the Philippines were the fruits of the labors of missionary friars, sustained by an indigenous clergy and made vibrant by the faithful people. The conquest of the Philippines was due fundamentally not the sword of the conquistadores, but the cross of the missionary. It was the missionary zeal and charity that brought the Filipinos into the fold of the church. Today, we gather with pride, we gather with joy and gratitude as the light of faith came to our beloved Philippines, the arsenal of faith, the deposit of Christianity in the East. We Filipinos stand out for our religious devotion. Our broad range of Catholic devotional practices are characteristically sacramental. They are usually connected with especially venerated images of Jesus, Mary, and the saints. Our towns and cities, patron saints, are powerfully celebratory. Penitential rituals are appropriately practiced during Lent, and every region has its own favorite religious feast. A very strong, effective dimension distinguishes Filipinos' brand of Catholicism, our way of holiness. Landas ng Kabanalan is um, unabashedly physical, emotional, and fully human. We brought our religious devotions to the countries where we have migrated. Our religious practices and feasts 
have been instrumental in gathering us into dynamic ecclesial communities. They have sustained our faith as we struggle to face the many challenges of living and working abroad. We have not been deterred by difficulties of practicing our form of religiosity where they might be looked upon with suspicion. Instead, we draw courage and consolation from practicing in the year-round religious activities sponsored by the Filipino chaplaincies and apostolates. The Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark has sustained and nurtured an ecclesial community of Filipinos for years. It has accompanied the diaspora Filipinos in our journey towards a better life and a more meaningful relationship with God, even in the midst of crisis. And today, we conclude the celebration of the 500th anniversary of the arrival of the gospel in the Philippines. The Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark will now proudly present the various Filipino religious traditions, ang landas ng kabalalan, our way to holiness. The Jubilee Cross. 500 years ago, Ferdinand Magellan was the first European to come to the Philippines in March 16, 1521. On Easter Sunday, March 31, 1521, the first mass was celebrated on the small island of Limasawa. That year, the first Filipino Catholics received the gift of faith. Magellan planted a cross to signify this important event about the propagation of the Roman Catholic faith in what is now Cebu in Central Philippines. It's a time of joy, a time of peace, a time when hearts are then set free, a time to heal the wounds of division. It's a time of grace, a time of hope, a time of sharing the gifts we have, a time to build the world that is one. It's the time to give thanks to the Father, Son, and Spirit. And with Mary, our mother, we sing this song. Open your hearts to the Lord and begin to see the mystery that we are all together as one family. time of grace, a time to lift our hands to God, a time to recall all the graces. It's a time to touch, a time to reach those hearts that often wander, a time to bring them back to God's embrace. It's the time to give thanks to the Father, Son, spirit and with Mary our mother we sing this song
Santo Nino and the Sinulo. It also began when an image of the Holy Child, called the Santo Nino, was given as a baptismal gift to the local chief's wife by Spanish explorers led by Portuguese born Ferdinand Magellan. When Magellan arrived in Cebu, he was received positively by the local chief, Raja Humabon, and his wife, Juana. They were baptized to Catholicism together with his 800 subjects. The Santo Nino is as old as the Catholic faith in the country. Made by Flemish artisans, the statue, now known as the Santo Nino de Cebu, is enshrined in a chapel within Basilica Minore del Santo Nino de Cebu, or simply Santo Nino Basilica. The statue may be a diminutive figure but it stands regal with its left hand, holding a cross-bearing orb, a symbol of Christian authority, while its other hand is posed in a priestly blessing gesture.
the Simbang Gabi. That light of faith is symbolized by the Filipino parol, the most iconic symbol of Filipino Christmas spirit. The star-shaped lanterns are displayed hanging outside the house along the busy streets of the cities and even in provincial towns and small villages. May it be a parol with simple or intricate designs for Filipinos, it is an expression of shared faith and hope. It symbolizes the triumph of light over darkness and Filipinos' goodwill. Simbangabi is a Filipino Christmas tradition. It is novena of masses in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary from December 16th to the 24th. Simbangabi masses were held in the early hours of the morning around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. when roosters crowed to announce the dawning of the new day. Thus the name Misa de Gallo, specifically to allow farmers to hear mass before going to the fields in the morning.
la Semana Santa. Quaresma is Lent. It is the season when Filipinos remember Christ's passion, his suffering in death and resurrection. It starts on Ash Wednesday, 40 days before Easter Sunday. On this day, you will see Catholic Filipinos returning from church with ash smudged on their foreheads in the shape of a cross. If you don't have the mark, you'll be asked if you've attended Mass. Semana Santa, or Holy Week, is traditionally a solemn occasion in the Philippines, a time for serious atonement. Holy Week is when many people perform holy rites in fulfillment of a vow they made when they asked God a favor, such as a cure for an illness. For most of the week, especially after Tuesday, the towns are eerily quiet with TV and radio stations going off the air and no loud noises or revelry whatsoever. Catholics stop eating meat, turning to fish, and the more devout ones go on a completely liquid diet. Many businesses are closed and the whole week is a non-working national holiday. The traditional pasa, uh, pabasa starts on Sunday and ends on Monday, to Thursday, which is the day when the washing of the feet is celebrated. The most striking feature is the sight of Filipinos publicly whipping themselves and having their feet and hands nailed to a wooden cross. The are reenactments of the torture and death of Jesus.
The Salubo. Catholics across the Philippines marked Easter Sunday with a traditional Salubo. Many Filipinos rise by 3 or 4 a.m. for a pre-dawn procession, which is a reenactment of the first meeting of Jesus Christ and his sorrowful mother, popularly known as Mater Dolorosa, after his death and on the cross.
mga bayani ng pananampalataya, our heroes of faith. The Filipino people are known for their strong religious faith. Even in the midst of the most trying moments of their collective history, their faith remains steadfast. As we celebrate the 500th anniversary of the arrival of the gospel in the Philippines, we will also honor and introduce the Filipino heroes of faith. They are faithful Filipino Catholics who are almost saints, those who have been declared venerable or blessed, but have not quite been deemed saints by the church. The church currently recognizes hundreds of Filipino faithful as either servants of God, venerable, or blessed, meaning there are still hundreds of saints and perhaps even many more yet to be proclaimed as such. Currently, we have two saints, three blesseds, seven venerables, 20 servants of God, 18 are candidates for sainthood, and 64 martyrs who have affiliations with the Philippine Church. Here are 14 faithful Filipino Catholics, declared saints, blessed, venerable, or servants of God, whose incredible stories are as inspiring as they are diverse. Blessed Diego Luis de San Vitores was a Spanish Jesuit missionary in the Philippines, went to Guam, and founded the first Catholic church on the island of Guam. He was martyred in Guam together with San Pedro Calungsod and was beatified in October 6, 1985 by Pope John Paul II. Blessed Diego Luis de San Vitores, pray for us. Blessed Jose Maria de Manila was born in Manila, Philippines on the 5th of September. He spent his initial years of education at Ateneo de Manila University, Colegio de San Juan de Letran, and University of Santo Tomas. He stayed in the Philippines until he was 16 years old, pursuing further studies in Spain. Despite objections from his parents, he fulfilled his desire to become a Capuchin priest. He was martyred during the Spanish Civil War and was beatified on October 13, 2013. Blessed Jose Maria de Manila, pray for us. Blessed Justo Takayama Ukon was a Japanese Catholic samurai who lived during the Sengoku period that witnessed anti-Catholic sentiment. He abandoned his status as a samurai to devote himself to his faith and was exiled to Manila, where he lived a life of holiness until his death two months later. He was beatified on February 7, 2017. Blessed Justos Takayama Ukon, pray for us. Venerable Mother Ignacia de Espiritu Santo de Juco was a Filipino religious sister and was known for her acts of piety and religious poverty and founded the Congregation of the Religious of the Virgin Mary, the first native Filipino female. She was declared venerable by Pope Benedict XVI in July 6, 2007. Venerable Mother Ignacia de Espiritu Santo de Juco, pray for us. Venerable Maria Beatriz del Rosario de Arroyo was a Filipino nun and the founder of the Dominican Sisters of the Most Holy Rosary in of the Philippines. Unspoiled by her affluent um, upbringing as a member of the aristocracy, she preferred a simple life and donated her inheritance to the congregation. She was declared 
Venerable on June 11, 2019, Venerable Maria Beatriz del Rosario de Arroyo, pray for us. Venerable Francisca de Espirito Santo de Fuentes was born around 1647. She grew up to be a fine lady, and she was given in marriage to a gentleman who died shortly thereafter, and leaving her a childless young widow. She then dedicated her time to prayer and social service, helping many poor and sick in the city. She was a third order Dominican in 1682 and was declared Venerable on July 5th, 2019. Venerable Francisca de Espirito Santo de Fuentes, pray for us. Venerable Alfredo Maria Obviar was born on August 29th, 1889 in Mataas na Lupa, Lipa, Batangas. He entered Central Seminary of the University of Santo Tomas for his theological studies and was ordained on March 15, 1919. Motivated by his great work for catechists, he founded the Missionary Catechists of St. Therese, MCST. He was a council father at the first session of the Second Vatican Council. He died on October 1, 1978, on the feast of his patron saint, Therese of the Child Jesus. Pope Francis named him as Venerable on 7th November, November 7th, 2018. Venerable Alfredo Maria Obviar, pray for us. Servants of God, Bishop Alfredo Verzosa, was a Filipino Catholic bishop. He founded the Congregation of the Missionary Catechists of the Sacred Heart, a congregation focusing on the missions of education and administration within the church, especially of Catholic catechists. His cause for beatification is currently underway. Servant of God, Bishop Alfredo Verzosa, pray for us. Servant of God, Bishop Teofilo Camumot, was born on March 3, 1914 in Barangay Cogon, Sarkar, Cebu. At an early age, Camumot was already exposed to a very religious environment. He showed signs of love and concerns for the poor, asking his mother for some rice or food so that he can give to the farmers and poor people. Kamumut entered the seminary in Cebu City and was ordained a priest on the 14th of December, 1941. Celebrating his first mass at the second floor of his home instead of his parish church because of the outbreak of the Second World War. He died on September 27, 1988. On October 15, 2010, the Holy See has approved the opening of the calls for beatification and canonization. Servant of God, Bishop Teofilo Kamuma, pray for us. Servant of God, Lariana Franco, was born on July 4, 1936, in Hagonoi, Taguig, into a poor family. Her parents were exceptionally pious and taught the Catholic faith to their children. At a young age, she became a member of the Legion of Mary, where she developed a strong devotion to the Blessed Mother. She became a dedicated catechist and founded the vocation to which she devoted her life. After struggling patiently with cancer, she died on October 7, 2011. Franco's cause for beatification formally commenced this year, 2021, in line with the 500th anniversary of Christianity of the Philippines. Even before her death, she had been regarded by many as a living saint. Servants of God, Loriana Franco, pray for us. Servant of God Richard Michael Fernando was born on February 27, 1970. Fernando and other Jesuit missionaries went to Phnom Penh, Cambodia for his regency in May 1995. 
Ritchie quickly earned the trust of his young students as he learned their native language and took the time to listen to their stories of suffering. On October 17, 1996, a troubled kid brought and detonated a grenade and Fernando was hit by their shrapnel and later died in a local hospital. The life of Brother Richie is worth of admiration and emulation to all of us in this world who belittles love and sacrifice for others in the name of God. Servant of God, Richard Michael Fernando, pray for us. Servant of God, Darwin Ramos, was born on December 17, 1994, in a slum between Edsa and Libertad LRT stations. Darwin was the second child of a very poor family. In order to help his family, Darwin became a waste picker in the street. He spent his day going through garbage to recover plastic waste, which they sold. He was later diagnosed with muscular dystrophy until he could no longer stand as his muscles weakened further. Poverty pushed the family to live on the street. Darwin developed a deep personal relationship with Christ. Not a day passed that the young boy did not take time out to entrust himself to Jesus. Darwin, intimately united with the Lord in his suffering, was already sharing the joy. He died on Sunday, September 23rd, 2012. The cause for sainthood officially opened on August 28th, 2019. Servants of God, Darwin Ramos, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod was a Catholic Filipino migrant, sacristan, and missionary catechist who, along with the Spanish Jesuit missionary Diego Luis de San Vitores, suffered religious persecution and martyrdom in Guam for their missionary work in 1672. While in Guam, Calungsod preached Christianity to the Chamorro people through catechesis while baptizing infants, children, and adults at the risk and expense of being persecuted and eventually murdered. Through Calungsod and San Vitores' missionary efforts, many native Chamorros converted to Roman Catholicism. Calungsod was beatified on March 5, 2000 by Pope John Paul II and canonized by Pope Benedict XVI at St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City on October 21, 2012. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. San Lorenzo Luis Ruiz de Manila is the Philippines' proto-martyr after his execution in Japan. Lorenzo endured many and various cruel methods of torture. On September 27, 1637, Lorenzo and his companions were taken to Nishizaka Hill, where they were tortured by being hung upside down over a pit. He died two years later, on September 29, 1637, aged 42. Despite his suffering, Lorenzo refused to renounce Christianity and died from eventual blood loss and suffocation. His body was cremated with the ashes thrown into the sea. Lorenzo declared these words upon his death. I am a Catholic and wholeheartedly do accept death for God. If I had a thousand lives, all these to him shall I offer. San Lorenzo Ruiz de Manila, pray for us. celebratory and colorful month in many cities and villages throughout the Philippines for two main reasons, Flores de Mayo and Santa Cruzan. Filipinos celebrate a tradition known as Flores de Mayo by a daily offering of flowers to the Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus throughout the month of May, which climaxes on May 31st with a glittering procession of sagalas at a Santa Cruzan procession. 
Santa Cruzan, a pinnacle of the month-long festival in May, can be described as a sort of religio-historical beauty pageant. It is held to commemorate the discovery of the Holy Cross, which, as believed, was made by Saint Helena and her son Constantine, who became the first Christian Roman Emperor.
the Marian procession, Pueblo Amante de Maria, the Filipino's love for Mary. To understand Filipino Catholics, one must understand their love for Mary. This love takes the form of unique and showy displays of affection not seen even in countries where some of the Marian devotions originated. Filipinos have homegrown Marian devotions with homespun titles of the Filipinos' own making. Mama Mary, an affectionate address, is distinctly Filipino and suggests intimacy and devotion. It is not surprising to see in our homes, big or small, an altar with the image of Mary festooned with sweet-scented flowers like Sampaguita, Ilang Ilang, and Kamya. What a wonderful sight it is to see our families pray the rosary together. Praying the rosary as a family and individually is one way of giving honor to Mary as our mother. Please welcome our mother of perpetual help.
Carnaval de Manila. Please welcome Our Lady of Manawa. The Flores de Mayo. To cap the pageantry is the floral offering to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Flores is the traditional, 
Mayflower offering rites done by young girls and now with boys included during the whole month of May in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This event is entirely separate from the Santa Cruzan. Anybody who has flowers can follow and offer the flowers to the Blessed Virgin.
I'm sorry to say, but we have to cut short the floor offering as we will begin with Mass. So those who are lining up, please go back to your pews. Just insert where you are standing now as we'll have to begin Mass right now. If you are in the line, please insert to the pews and we are ending our floral offering. Thank you. We have to begin Mass right now. We will now move Our Lady of Manawag to the side. Thank you very much. So those who are moving the sun, the imahen, please do it now. Marshals could just collect the roses with your baskets. Our Lady of Manawag and the rest of the Statues of Mary will be uh, available after Mass at the, uh, at the Piazza as we have more fiestas there so you can have chance. Cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. O oh, render him glorious praise, alleluia. We raise our voices to our risen Lord, singing, sing with all the saints in glory in your worship booklet, page four.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God, and may this rite of sprinkling be a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit that we have received. Blessed are you, God, the Father Almighty, for you have created water to cleanse and give life. Blessed are you, God, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, for you poured forth water with blood from your side so that your death and resurrection, the church, might be born. Blessed are you, God, the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan, that we might all be baptized in you. By the mystery of this blessed water, graciously lead to spiritual rebirth your servants, whom you have called to this cleansing in the faith of the church, that they may have eternal life through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Kinutlo, gikan sa buhat sa mga apostoles. Unya, gidala nila ang mga apostoles ngadto sa labang hukmanan o gisukit-sukit sila sa Pangulong Pari. Mingon siya, Dili ba gididan man namo kamo pagpanudlo sa ngalan ni Ining Tauhana? Apang tanawa kining inyong kibuhat, Gisangyaw ninyo ang iyang pagtulunan sa tibuok Jerusalem. Ug buot ninyo ipaila nga kami ang nakaingon sa iyang kamatayon. Si Pedro ug ang ubang mga apostoles mitubag. Kinahanglan sundo namo ang Dios og dili ang mga tao. Ang Dios sa atong mga katigulangan. Nagbanhaw kang Jesus, human ninyo siya patya, pinaagi sa paglansang kaniya sa krus. O gibayaw siya sa Diyos, ngadto sa iyang tuo, ingon nga panu- pangulo, o manluluwas. Aron paghatag sa katawhan sa Israel, o higayon sa paghinulsul, o sa ingon mapasaylo. Ang ilang mga salak. Saksi kami ni ining mga butanga. Ingon man ang Espiritu Santo nga mao ang gasa sa Dios ni adtong mga nagmasinugtanon kaniya. Busa ilang gipasulod sa lawak ang mga apostoles o gipalatos. O gibauran na dili nagayod pagsulti sa ngalan ni Jesus. O gibuhian sila. Unya nang gula ang mga apostoles, malipayon nga ang Dios nag-isip kanilang takus sa pagantos sa kaulawan tungod sa ngalan ni Jesus. ang pulong sa ginoo. Up 
from the nether world. You preserved me among those going down into the pit. I Daytoy maibasa na adaw iti libro iti paltiing. Siak ni Juan, kimita ak ket nangeg ko titimek dagiti rinibu ken riniw riw nga angeles. Ninaulaw da iti trono dagiti si bibiyag a parsua ken dagiti panglakayen ket inkantada iti napigsa. Ti kordero ang napapatay, may ikari nga umawat, iti pan nakabalin, kinabaknang, kinasirib, ken kinapigsa, dayaw, dayag, ken panagkaitanok. Ket nangyeg ko, ti panagkanta, dagiti ami na parswa, sa dilangit, Dagiti adda dito'y daga, dagiti adda iti uneg ti daga, dagiti adda ijay baybay ken amin aparswa ti intero alubong. Iti si tutugaw iti trono ken iti kordero, maited kuma iti tanok ken dayaw, dayag ken panakabalin iti agnanayon, nga inggana. Amen! Insungbat dagiti upbat nga si Bibiaga Parswa. Ket nagparintumeng dagiti panglakayen sada nagdaydayaw. Ti sao iti apo.
speak and may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sumayin niyo ang Panginoon. Ang pagpapahayag ng mabuting balita ng Panginoon ayon kay San Juan. Noong panahong iyon, muling nagpakita si Jesus sa mga alagad sa tabi ng lawa ng Tiberias. Ganito ang pangyayari. Magkakasama si na Simon Pedro, tumas na tinaguri ang kambal, Nathaniel na tagakana sa Galilea, ang mga anak ni Zebedeo at dalawa pang alagad. Sinabi sa kanila ni Simon Pedro, Mangingisla ako. Sasama kami wika nila. Umalis sila at lumulan sa bangka, subalit walang nahuling isda sa gabing iyon. Nang magbubukang liwayway na, tumayo si Jesus sa pangpang, ngunit hindi siya nakilala ng mga alagad. Sinabi niya, Mga anak, meron ba kayong nahuli? Wala po, tugon nila. Ihulog ninyo ang lambat sa gawing kanan ng bangka at makahuhuli kayo, sabi ni Jesus. Inihulog nga nila ang lambat at hindi nila mahila sa dami ng huli. Sinabi kay Pedro ng alagad na minamahal ni Jesus, Ang Panginoon yun! Nang marinig ito ni Simon Pedro, siya'y nagsuot ng damit sapagkat hubad siya at tumalon sa tubig ang kasama niyang mga alagad ay sumapit sa pampang sakay ng munting bangka hila-hila nila ang lambat na puno ng isda hindi sila gaano kalayuan sa pampang mga siyam na pung metro lamang pag aho nila sa pampang ay nakakita sila roon ng mga baga na may isdang nakaihaw at ilang tinapay Magdala kayo rito ng ilang isdang nahuli ninyo, sabi ni Jesus. Kaya't sumampa sa bangka si Simon Pedro at hinila sa pangpang ang lambat na puno ng malalaking isda, isandaan at limampu't tatlo lahat. Hindi na punit ang lambat, kahit ganoon karami ang isda. Hali kayo at mag-agahan tayo, sabi ni Jesus. Isa man sa mga alagad ay walang nangahas magtanong sa kanya kung sino siya sapagat alam nila na siya ang Panginoon. Lumapit si Jesus, kinuha ang tinapay at ibinigay sa kanila, gayon din ang isda. Ito ang ikatlong pagpapakita ni Jesus sa mga alagad, pagkatapos na siya ay muling nabuhay. 
Pagkakain nila, tinanong ni Jesus si Simon Pedro, Simon, anak ni Juan, iniibig mo ba ako ng higit kaysa sa mga ito? Opo, Panginoon, nalalaman ninyong iniibig ko kayo, tugon niya. Sinabi sa kanya ni Jesus, Pakainin mo ang aking mga batang tupa. Muli siyang tinanong ni Jesus, Simon, anak ni Juan, iniibig mo ba ako? Sumagot si Pedro, Opo, Panginoon, nalalaman ninyong iniibig ko kayo? Wika ni Jesus, Pangalagaan mo ang aking mga tupa. Pangatlong ulit na tinanong siya ni Jesus, Simon, anak ni Juan, iniibig mo ba ako? Nalungkot si Pedro, sapagkat makaitlo siyang tinanong, Iniibig mo ba ako? At sumagot siya, Panginoon, nalalaman po ninyo ang lahat ng bagay. Nalalaman ninyong iniibig ko kayo. Sinabi sa kanya ni Jesus, Pakainin mo ang aking mga tupa. Tandaan mo, noong kabataan mo pa, ikaw ang magbibihis sa iyong sarili at lumalakad ka kung saan mo ibig. Ngunit pagtanda mo, iuunat mo ang iyong mga kamay at iba ang magbibihis sa iyo at dadalhin ka kung saan hindi mo ibig. Sinabi niya ito upang ipakilala kay Pedro kung paano mamamatay at sa gayon ay mapaparangalan niya ang Diyos. Pagkatapos sinabi ni sa kanya ni Jesus, Sumunod ka sa akin. Mga kapatid, ang mabuting balita ng ating Panginoon. Pinupuri ka namin, Panginoong Iso Kristo. Wow! Wow! You should see how beautiful you look from up here. Good afternoon, everyone. My Filipino sisters and brothers, welcome to your house on this great and glorious day. I'm just curious, by a raise of hands, who is here in this cathedral for the very first time? Wow, look at all that. Look at all that. Great. Today, you fill this place with Filipino pride and joy as a part of the great mosaic of people that make up the great Archdiocese of Newark. Family, faith, and joy fills our heart this Easter day. As you have probably figured out, I am not Cardinal Tobin. <laughs> but he sends along his prayers and great wishes to all of you from Rome, where he is presently, wishing you peace and joy on this day. I feel so incredibly honored to be here with you as this celebration of 500 years of Philippine Christianity comes to a close. I hope that you will accept me today as an honorary Filipino. <laughs> as I've been privileged to have taken three legs of this 
journey with you over the past year together with you. I am so incredibly honored to celebrate this day with all of you. The colors and the pageantry of your devotedness reminds you of the celebratory and colorful month that is May in many villages throughout the Philippines. During this past year, you have gathered often to recall your past and to celebrate your valued traditions and heroes, the saints and blesseds you have recalled today. It was these very practices, these very devotions, where your people found consolation, courage, and faith to sustain your spirits despite the hardships experienced in living and working abroad in this country. But I'd like to use this celebration today to bridge the past with the time ahead. A bridge leads us from one place to another and gets us over some obstacle that prevents easy crossing. Our gospel today is rich in bringing alive the opportunity to walk the pathways of discipleship with renewed intention and conviction. Our gospel begins, bridges, the first call of the apostles, and particularly Peter, with a renewed call to follow Jesus. And the link or renewal is forged by our Easter celebration. The resurrection of Jesus allows grace to flow in great abundance on Jesus' followers. And it's grace we all need in the time ahead. This past Lent, I read a book about the genius of Jesus. And when we think of geniuses, we usually think of people who are gifted in such a way that their gifts are not transferable to us, though we may like them. <laughs> but the difference in Jesus' genius is this, that he made his genius transferable it was not out of our reach. By opening our hearts to him and being around him, our capacity to live our lives with greater intention and meaning is possible. We could become more like him, in communion with him. And it was through the gift of the Holy Spirit that made all of this so possible. Today's gospel, we catch up with some of Jesus' followers back along the Sea of Galilee, some distance from Jerusalem, where Jesus was crucified and buried. Disappointed and, and maybe tired mentally from all that had taken place, they sought some comfort. So Peter and six of his friends do something that was comfortable for them. They went out fishing. The impulsive Peter is going fishing maybe just to, to clear his head or, or to soothe his aching heart. And others will follow him to the boat that just goes out a short distance. And it is here where Jesus renews their call to follow him by doing something that stirred their memories of a past time. When Jesus first called Peter, Andrew, and John, they had fished all night and caught nothing. And Jesus provided a great catch so that when it happened this time, it not only recalls their first calling, but cements their conviction that Jesus had risen from the dead. Therefore, all that he had said and done in the years that they walked so closely beside him was not lost. Their deep connection and friendship allowed them to dream again of a new beginning. Jesus was truly with them. He was alive. Alleluia.
My dear sisters and brothers, we are very familiar with the Last Supper and know what it refers to. But in today's gospel, we experience Jesus having the first breakfast with his disciples. He has come to be with them again in friendship, not because they were so loyal to him, but because Jesus desired to shower them with deep love. And love inspires us in so many ways in life. The love for our families and children and for the welfare of those that we care about brings about a real desire to sacrifice for the other. Many of your Marian devotions are rooted in a mother's love and protection of her children near and far. We go to Mary because she taught us how to go with surrender, how to make a real yes and never turn away. And with a mission, do whatever he tells you, referring to her son. My friends, we are reminded that our call to discipleship must be rooted in a deep and personal encounter with Jesus, which is fed each time we gather for our spiritual family meal. The Eucharist places Christ before us, and each time we celebrate it, it opens us to the possibility to come away determined and so full of desire to respond to the gifts that have been given us. May every devotion or small group meeting or grand festival that you gather in from this day forward not only be a connection to your cultural heritage, but a bridge, a bridge to committed faith and hope in Christ. Let us gather often with Jesus to be inspired. The genius of Jesus' grace comes next to Peter in a most personal way. Who among us cannot identify with how Peter might have been suffering from crippling shame and brokenness? He thought that he was so ready to be with Jesus in any circumstance, and he knew that he had failed miserably. I think he jumps off that boat so quickly because he wanted to be the first to gauge Jesus' reaction when he would see him again. He wanted to know if Jesus still loved him. And Peter gets the chance. He gets the chance to affirm his love for the Lord three times in an unmistakable hint that Jesus had forgiven Peter. But he forgave Peter for a greater purpose than just his feelings. He forgave him for a mission Feed my sheep. My sisters and brothers, our common call as the body of Christ, as disciples, is also rooted in sharing our faith with others. Peter, now a convinced disciple, is now convicted to share the mercy and the hope he has received in any way that he could. The early chapters of the Acts of the Apostles are filled with stories of a man whose words and actions convey a total change of perspective. The gift of the Holy Spirit he received in his heart lit a fire of devotion and witness we are all called to embrace with new vigor. So let people see our joy. Let people see our strength and faith. Let people experience the mercy they need through our willingness to listen and offer healing. While we are all proud of our varied cultural heritages here in America, let's share them and learn from them. Indeed, the one speaking to you has learned so much from you. When I was ordained a priest, I had no idea what Simbanga B or Santa Cruzanwe even was. <laughs> but proudly today, I can say I know 
at least in some way, what it means to you, having shared in it myself. And finally, Jesus invites Peter and his followers to follow him. They now all know something quite different from the first time that they were called. That following Jesus didn't mean that it was all going to be glory. The road ahead would be paved with hardship and suffering. But they now knew that Jesus' grace would rescue them even from death itself. In our times, our walk with the Lord will be challenged. We know that we need to inspire young people to deeper faith and activity in the mission of the church, and it's so good to see so many young people amongst you today. We know that our culture and its values pressures us to abandon faith altogether. Communal life, a shared experience of faith, is often deterred by a radical individuality. But faith, family, and community are essential to disciples of Jesus, and I know that the Filipino people know that so incredibly well. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it has been 500 years of tradition, faith, and culture. So together here, let us all walk across the bridge with our Easter faith to follow Christ with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds. Amen. 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 Together now let us stand and profess our Catholic faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, as we culminate our celebration of 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, Let us pray with faith and confidence to God, whose love truly endures forever. Para hang simbahang katolika, habugos nga kalibutan, labi na ang simbahan ha Pilipinas, og hang art de Yusises han Nuwar, nga diri mawara ang atun kadasig, pagpasangyaw han maupay nga sumat, habugos nga kalibutan. Good ang nga tanan, maka eksperyensyahan matalwason nga gugma o kalooy ni Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Para sa satuyang Santo Papa, si Papa Francisco, sa satuyang Cardinal Joseph Tobin, mga obispo, mga kapadian, asin gabos na mga laiko, na naglilingkod sa simbahang katolika, lugod magpadago sinda sa pagtugdok kan kahadean ni Diyos digdi sa kinaban, asin maging tagapagbunyog kan pagkamot, pagkaherak, 
asin pagmalasakit kan Dios sa bilog nga katuwahan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Para sa apostolado sa mga Filipino, diri sa aton arkidiosis sang Newark. Kabay, ang magpadayon kita sa pag-alagad sa Ginoo kag sa mga Filipino, diri sa aton arkidiosis paagi sa pagpadayon sang aton mga tradisyon kag mga buluhaton sang simbahan bilang tanda sang aton digosyon kag bilang pamaagi sa pagpasantos sang aton mga kaugalingon we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer Teresa kita para de todo di aton. Ke invitao para kamina junto durante este tiempo del sinod. Ke ta anda unido cerca con el anak. Ojalá kita tamen ay vivi junto con uno y otro. Y por eso ay queda kita. Señal de unidad. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Para kareng Pilipino migrante, ameki pagsapalaran, bang mikabale ang pong obra ketiking legal ning oportunidad. Manano na sanang karelabang panamdaman ing kaligtasan king kaya katamong parokya at akit na na kametungan talaking komunidad ning kasal pantayanan na alang pamangabiran karela. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Por los enfermos y moribundos, que encuentren consuelo y fortaleza al ver el rostro de Cristo en sus sufrimientos y momentos de soledad. También oramos por los que fallecieron, especialmente los miembros de nuestras familias y aquellos que no tienen a nadie que oren por ellos. Let we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of peace all over the world, and especially in Ukraine, mm. that God will bring an end to war and violence and help everyone to recognize the beauty and dignity of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, be near to your people and hear our prayers. We have many needs that we cannot express, but you know them, and we ask you to help us. We also implore the special intercession of Saints Lorenzo Ouiz and Pedro Colensad, that we may be strengthened in our faith and persevere in serving one another in love. We make this in all our prayers, through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Story of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, Michael, our Presider Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles, with San Lorenzo Ruiz and San Pedro Calungsod, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together now, let us pray with faith, hope, and confidence in the words our Savior taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another the sign of peace. 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 You're welcome. Peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bishop Saparito and all the beloved in the Lord present here today and those following up us on social media, we have come to commission the officers and members of the various committee of the Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark. The Filipino ministry is a specialized ministry of Christ Holy Church. Christ alone is the source of all Christian ministry and through the ages calling men and women to serve. By the Holy Spirit, all who believe and are baptized receive a ministry to witness to Jesus as Savior and Lord and to love and serve those with whom they live and work. We are ambassadors for Christ who reconciles and makes whole. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. May I now present to you the priest coordinators. Please all stand. Priest coordinators of the uh, pond. Please come here in front. and also the county coordinators. <laughs> and as I call the officers and committee coordinators of each county, please stand and remain in your place where you are right now. The officers, committee coordinators, and members of Union County. Please remain standing. The officers and committee coordinators and members of Essex County. The officers and committee coordinators and members of Hudson County. The officers and committee coordinators and members of Bergen County. My dear officers, coordinators, and members of the various committees of the Filipino Apostolate, yours is a specialized ministry. You are called to build up Christ's church in and around the Archdiocese of Newark. I now implore God's blessings upon you and request Most Reverend Michael Saporito, in behalf of His Eminence Cardinal Joseph Tobin, the Archbishop of Newark. <clears throat> On behalf of the Archbishop of Newark, I congratulate you for your active invol involvement in the Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark and your leadership in your respective counties. I hereby commission you to go forth from here to all the ends of the earth and proclaim God's word, declare forgiveness through Jesus Christ, celebrate Christ's holy sacraments, and share people's joys and sorrows. Encourage the faithful through your good works and example. Recall those who have fallen away. Help the sick and the dying. Serve with the whole church in its ministry to the world. Be loyal to the witness and work of the church, using all your abilities to further its mission here and throughout the world. Therefore, strive to fulfill faithfully, diligently, and cheerfully 
all the duties required of you by your office and respective committees. Beloved servant in Christ, be attentive to yourself and to all the flock given to your care by the Holy Spirit. Loved Christ, feed his lambs, tend his sheep. Be an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. And now I implore God's blessings upon you. Almighty and ever-loving God, you taught us to pray for ourselves and for others and to give thanks for all of life. May every grace rest upon your chosen people who serve as officers, coordinators, and members of the various committees of the Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark. Keep them strong and faithful. May they herald the joy of your kingdom, serving rather than being served. Give them your grace. Strengthen it in service. Preserve it in harmony. Use it to extend your reign of justice and peace. Inspire your whole church with your spirit of power, unity, and peace. Grant that all who trust you may live together in love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations to all of you. At this point, I would like to request to please stand all those who are actively involved in the respective parishes as parish trustees, officers and members of pastoral or finance councils, leaders or members of the various ministries, apostolates and committees and associations. Please all stand, those who are actively involved in their parishes. Whether you are Eucharistic ministers, lecturers, altar servers, ushers, greeters, <laughs> choir members. <laughs> In behalf of the Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark, we want you to know how much we appreciate your consistent presence and active participation in your respective parishes as members, officers, and volunteers. Your willingness to assume greater roles and responsibilities with respect to various parish ministries and activities and leadership opportunities has helped make the Church in the Archdiocese of Newark the kind of dynamic, adaptive, and creative parish. As the, as the Archdiocesan Coordinator of the Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark, and in behalf of all the Filipino priests of the Archdiocese, I thank you for your continued active engagement in our parishes. It takes all of us, bishops, pastors, parochial vicars, deacons, laity, parents, youth, and kids to be complete body of Christ. And quoting St. Paul in his letter to the Philippians, I am quite confident that the one who began a good work in you will go on completing it until the day of Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ comes. Thank you and congratulations to all of you. <laughs> Napakarami po pala ninyong mga volunteers sa parokya and I really appreciate that. Bishop Michael, the Filipino Apostolate of the Archdiocese of Newark and all the migrants in New Jersey want to express our gratitude to you for leading us in this Eucharistic celebration in thanksgiving for the arrival of Christian faith in the Philippines 500 years ago. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We bring to you the love of the 68,000 Filipinos living in the four counties of the Archdiocese of Newark.
Thank you, my brother priest, for your support to the Filipino apostolate, for inspiring our Filipino laity. I thank most especially of our priests, committee, and county coordinators who have exerted extra effort to make this celebration a success. And I want to specifically recognize the hard work of Father Ralph Siendo in liturgy. <laughs> of Father Alfie Pangilinan in directing the whole Landas pageantry. <laughs> of Father Juancho de Leon in organizing the Santa Cruzan. Of Father Robert Lamires in managing the finances and making sure we have money to pay to those to all the expenses that we paid today. <laughs> Father Ed Sombilon in spiritually preparing our leadership team. Thank you. <laughs> to our county coordinators, Father Ed Hoxon, Father Alex Barbiero, Father Ed Sombilon, and Father Danny de la, Cruz, de la Pena. Thank you to you. And our coordinators for social services, Father Loy Buslon. And Father Alex Barbiero for faith and evangelization. Thank you. I thank and praise to the highest heavens all our energetic Filipino lay leaders, in particular, the untiring and dedicated county presidents, the Faan county officers, committee chairpersons, and their members who sacrifice so much of their time, talents, and treasures through the weekly meetings, either by in-person gathering or by Zoom. Your enthusiasm alone was very inspiring to all of us, I see the church alive in you. Although I know that the presentation of the pageantry of the Filipino religious traditions and popular piety entails a lot of work, however, I believe in the capabilities of our Filipino lay leaders and I know it can, it can be done. And so it happened with tremendous success. The presentation of the Landas ng Kabanalan brought back sentimental yet beautiful memories of our Catholic life in our beloved Philippines. To all those who participated in the Landas ng Kabanalan pageantry, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. On the months, weeks, and days leading to this celebration, a new Barkadahan was formed and a new community of faith was born. I would like to specially mention the Fa'an Grand Chorale. <laughs> which today has rendered a high praise to God to their gift of singing. You sacrificed a lot of your time for rehearsals for travels, and most especially, you have sacrificed your diet. <laughs> As you turn your rehearsals, your rehearsal breaks into boodle fights. <laughs> the Fan Grand Choral is a combination of seven Filipino choirs, namely the Gifted to Gift Choir of Bergen County. <laughs> the Kayumangi Choral Incorporated, the Philharmonic Choir, the Bayani Hand Singers, the Hudson Chorale, devotees of Our Lady of Mana Rosary of Manawag, and the Joyful Noise Ensemble of Union County. We thank our instrumentalists from St. Joseph of Lodi, the New Jersey Music Ministry and our vocalist, of course, our music director, Paolo Areza. <laughs> and his assistant, Ronald Seludo. <laughs> My dear friends, this afternoon was really a celebration of our faith. 
the gift that we received 500 years ago. The gift must continue being a gift, and it must be shared. It is very evident that the gift of faith we have received is now being shared by the millions of Christian Filipino migrants in different parts of the world. We continue to inspire and motivate others by our selflessness, by our cheerful dispositions, our reliance, and our deep abiding faith and reliance on God's grace and providence. Gifted to Give renews the call to engage in mission inspired by Jesus' mandate of his disciples. What you have received as a gift, give as a gift. And so we give our yes to this renewed call to evangelization. It is all about a yes to everything decent, yes to everything good, yes to everything true, yes to everything beautiful, yes to everything that is noble in the human person. And to each and every one of you, maraming salamat po. And special mention also our thanks to the Master of Ceremonies and all the servers and the liturgical uh, committee of the cathedral. Thank you very much for helping us today. After the final blessing, um, we will have a you know, processional, mar uh, processional outs. Um, and then after that, the officers and those participating in the landas will have the photo for our journal. So please remain. And those, um, we will have food bags for you after. There are counties, tents for the counties, so you may go to your own counties. Then I would like to announce to you that on October 23 to 27 of 2023, next year, the Archdiocese of Newark and all these uh, other dioceses around our area in New York will be welcoming around 500 to 700 Filipino priests from all over of America. So we will be asking your help. Thank you. Very, go ahead, please stand. Yeah. <clears throat> Very quickly, the only person Father Manolo didn't thank was himself. <laughs> Father Manolo is the coordinator of the Filipino Apostolate here in the Archdiocese of Newark. And as some of you know, we were together. I was his pastor, and he was my parochial vicar in St. Joseph's in Maplewood. So having seen everything that took place today, it is no surprise <laughs> of what has taken place. We thank you for your dedication. The Lord be with you. And with yours. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. 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 May he, by whose redeeming work you've received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks Thank be you. to God.
Malahulay dancing na yun.